गुड इवनिंग ऑल ऑफ यू हाउ आर डूइंग गाइस अ वॉम वेलकम टू इंडिया मोस्ट कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव ई लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म दट इज बाइजूस एग्जाम प्रैप सो आई होप यू एंजॉय द लास्ट सेशन टूडे आई थिंक आई कैन सी सम ऑफ सम न्यू कमर्स ऑल्सो डोंट वरी यू कैन इजिली फॉलो दिस सेशन I'm going to discuss some simple techniques to solve electric circuits. Last class I discussed network reduction and also of course current division and voltage division methods. I suggested one a method called jumping technique which can be used to solve a single source networks. So today we will do one more problem on the jumping technique. and after that we will switch over to the multi source networks which can be solved by node analysis and mesh analysis before i explain the node analysis and mesh analysis i will also give you a quick recap of node and mesh analysis okay how we write the equations in an easy manner using a method called inspection so stay tuned till the end of this session i'm sure that you will get maximum benefit out of it okay so before i get into the actual topic let me introduce myself because some of you might be the newcomers okay so please uh, see my profile here i am dr muninder irkulla i did my masters and phd from nit varangal i have 22 years of experience in teaching for the past 22 years i have been teaching gate engineering service exam and uh, psus okay I taught more than 250 batches across the country, guided and motivated more than two lakh students by visiting 500 plus engineering colleges across the country, and I presented some of my research articles at international conferences of IEEE and IET held at USA, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Korea, and Singapore. Okay, I'm presently supervising four PhD scholar. scholars on most uh, important and advanced topic that is smart grid technology using artificial intelligent techniques okay well my specializations network theory control systems and power systems so hi uh, ashok yeah don't worry ashok 50% only you can uh, in the test series my accuracy is 50% only how can i improve Okay, okay. So, did you take a mock test, subject-wise test? In mock test, you are talking about Ashok. Hi, Pranjal Pal Janpur. Power system. Please wait for some time. I'm going to plan it very soon. Okay, don't worry. I'm going to do it. i'm very soon i'm going to come up with a very important topics on uh, power system nana please give me some time okay i'm planning it already yeah ashok don't worry okay yeah subject wise test you are doing right okay so you need to actually practice more on uh, the previous gate as well as previous engineering services objective type questions okay so you please work on them once you are done with that please let me know I think you have already joined my Telegram group, right? If not, please do it immediately. Professor Muninder Gate. Okay, I am writing here. Professor Muninder Gate. This is my Telegram group, Nana. Please join. Okay, we can chat over there. We can discuss. I can guide you how to get it. First, you make sure that Gate and Engineering Service Objective Prelims papers. Okay. make sure that you have solved each and every question then once you done with that please let me know i will guide you which textbook and what type of questions again you can solve everything again guide you don't worry about that is it okay ashok well so please click on uh, the bell button like subscribe the byju's exam prep uh, channel i am sure that you will be getting okay the notifications whenever we are going to take uh, important sessions okay like this yeah now onwards i think you might be aware that 13th november onwards there is only one channel there are no separate channels for hindi and english only one channel will be there all faculty are available in that particular channel okay uh, you can find uh, the link in the description and uh, 
You can get up to 90% of the scholarship on the courses offered by Baiju's exam prep if you can score well in the scholarship test. That is, you know, going to be on 12th November. Don't miss this scholarship test. If you are willing to join the training program at Baiju's, better you take the scholarship test on 12th November at 8 p.m. Uh, if you score well, you'll be given up to 90% scholarship now, okay? Don't miss that exam. Well, so gate preparation uh, free ebook is also available. You can download that ebook, which is available in the description, okay? The link is available in the description. There are some free workshops. Please register for the free workshops. The, so many experts are going to talk on very important topics, okay? And uh, yes, so I told you already that scholarship test, the link is shown in the description. So please follow that link. And one more important thing is that the test series offered by the Baiju's exam prep, Nana. We have full line tests and subject wise tests offered by Baiju exam prep. Don't miss them. Uh, here 10 full length mock tests are there. 25 to 30 subject wise tests are there. Okay. So don't miss them. Yes. Of course for ESC also 16 full length mock tests and 25 to 30 subject wise tests. Got it. Okay. Well, Shall we continue our lecture now? Let's see now one more problem on the current division and voltage division. But I told you that I'm not going to discuss the current division and voltage division method. I'm going to apply an alternative method called jumping technique. Yes, all of you. So I think you might have followed that yesterday. Okay. If not, please, the newcomers, you can go through the go through the previous video also, and uh, you will definitely understand the concepts which I explained. I spent a lot of time and. Uh, discussed in detail how to apply the jumping technique. Of course, now also you can follow. Don't worry about that. Okay. Well, so find VG if current through 9 ohm is 1 ampere. Okay. VG is asking VG Nana if current through 9 ohm is 1 ampere. 1 ampere is given here. Okay. You are required to determine the VG value. Okay. Shall we apply now the jumping technique here? Yes. Look at this. Yes, when you want to apply the jumping technique, the first thing you have to do is you must know the node voltage of uh, 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 the voltage at one particular node. So once you know the voltage at one particular node from that point to any other node, you can easily jump just by either taking the voltage or dropping the voltage. Understand all of you. Okay, so now let us see here. This one ampere is given. When one ampere is given one into nine, it will give you nine volts. Yes or no? It is give you, okay, it is giving you the nine volts, right? Once you have nine volts here, if you assume this is zero, what is the voltage here, Nana? Nine volts. Following? It is nine volts. I hope you are following, okay? Now from this node to this node, you have to jump first. And then later from here to here, you have to jump. Then later here to here you have to jump. Following? Okay. Step by step. Okay. Let me first jump from this node to this node. For that you must know what is the voltage across 4 ohm. For that you require what is the current flowing through 4 ohm. Following? For that you require what is the current flowing through 2 and 1. These two are connected in series, Nana. Right? These two are connected in series. Therefore, you need to find the current here. What is the voltage across 2 and 1 combination? 2 and 1 are connected in series. 9 volts is appearing across it. 9 by 3 you are supposed to take. Don't take 9 by 2. 9 by 3 you are supposed to take because 2 and 1 are connected in series. 9 by 3 is nothing but 3 ampere. You understand? So 3 amperes is leaving. 1 ampere is leaving. Total 4 amperes is leaving. How much should enter to satisfy Kirchhoff's current law here? That is 4 ampere. You're following, okay? Once you know the 4 amperes, you know that 4 into 4, this will give you 16 volts. I'm just writing here, 4 into 4. Following, okay? Jump from this node to this node now. You're jumping from lower potential to higher potential. Look at this, lower potential to higher potential, you're jumping. You take the voltage, you drop the voltage. Lower to higher means increase in voltage. You have to take the voltage. So 9 plus 16, okay, this is going to be Okay, 25 volts following. This is going to be what? 25 volts. 
Now I need to jump from this node to this node. SR no for that. Let us simplify these two elements are replaced by what Nana? These two are simplified and replaced by a single equivalent element. What is that value? 20 parallel 5. 20 parallel 5 will give you 20 into 5 by 20 plus 5. That will be nothing but what? 4 ohm. Okay, this is 4 ohm. Following, okay? That is 4 ohm. Now tell me here. Now look at this. Across 4 ohm, you are supposed to know the voltage across it to jump from this particular node to this particular node. Following, okay? To know the voltage across 4 ohm, you must know what is current flowing through 4 ohm. To know what is the current flowing through 4 ohm, because at this node, there are so many branches connected here. One is 4 ohm, the other is 25 ohm, the other is 40 ohm, and here 4 ohm. To find current through 4 ohm, you must know what is the current flowing through 40 ohm, what is the current flowing through 25 ohm, what is the current flowing through 4 ohm. But already what is the current flowing through 4 ohm that is available, that is 4 ampere, right? What is the current flowing through 25 ohm? 25, this is 0, therefore 25 by 25 nothing but what 1 ampere okay but you do not know what is the current flowing through 40 ohm yes or no you can't take 25 by 40 because this is not operating at zero only this is operating at zero because there is a resistive element in between these two nodes that is 3 ohm you can't say this is operating at zero this is completely wrong yes or no all of you okay therefore must be careful so Unless you know current flowing through 40 ohm, you cannot find what is the current flowing through 4 ohm. Though you have current flowing through 4 ohm, current flowing through 25 ohm, you must require what is the current flowing through 40 ohm. You're following? Okay. Yes. So, now what is the current flowing through 40 ohm? How do you find? Unless you know this voltage, you can't do that. Yes or no? For that, what I do is, look at this. This voltage, the voltage at this node is how much, Nana? Zero. But if you find the current flowing through 3 ohm, okay, then you can find the voltage drop across 3 ohm. And now you can jump from this node to this node so that you will come to know what is the voltage. Yes or no? Okay, look at this. What is the current flowing through 3 ohm, Nana? Here you can see 3 amperes is coming like this, 1 ampere is coming like this, 1 ampere is coming like this. Totally 3 plus 1 plus 1, totally 5 amperes is actually should leave because 5 amperes is entering, 3 is entering, 1 is entering, 1 is entering. Totally 5 amperes is entering. When 5 amperes is entering, 5 amperes should leave to satisfy the Kirchhoff's current law. So 5 into 3 will give you 15 volt. Yes or no? Now from this particular node to this particular node, you are supposed to jump. You are jumping from higher potential to lower potential. That means you drop the voltage. So 0 minus 15. That means what? Minus 15 volt. Now you tell me what is the voltage across this 40 ohm nana? 25 here, minus 15 here. Total voltage will become what? 25 minus of minus 15. That is 40, 40 volts. Therefore, this particular current will become now 40 by 40, nothing but 1 ampere. Following all of you? Now tell me, what is the current flowing through this 4 ohm nana? The current flowing through 4 ohm, what is going to be now? It is going to be because here 4 amperes leaving, 1 ampere leaving, 1 ampere leaving. Totally how much? 4 plus 1 plus 1, that is 6 amperes is supposed to enter so that the Kirchhoff's current lies satisfied at this particular node. You understand? Following all of you? Very good, Ashok. Very good. Okay, 1 ampere uh, you got, right? Okay, but what is that 16? Ashok, tell me. What is that 3 ampere? Yes, 3 ampere, I think it's very good. 16 volts is very good. Yes, I got it now. 1 ampere is also very good. But I think you understand what is the voltage across 40 ohm, how I have calculated. Yes or no? Okay. Well, so 6 amperes into 4 ohm will give you plus minus. Okay, across this element, 6 into 4. Okay, 24 volts. Okay, this is nothing but 6 into 4 nana. 4 ohm into 6 ampere. Now jump from this particular node to this particular node. 25 plus 24. Why plus 24? Tell me because you are jumping from lower potential to 
higher potential. When you're jumping from lower potential to higher potential, you take the voltage. Already 25 is, is here. 24 is supposed to be taken. Finally, it is how much, Nana? 25 plus 24, nothing but what? 49 volts. This is nothing but what? 25 plus 24. Following? Okay. Now, one more step ahead. You know the voltage at this node. You need to know the voltage at this node. That's it. Simple. For that, you jump. For that, you must know what is the voltage across this 10 ohm. For that, you require what is the current flowing through 10 ohm. Yes or no? Okay. So, what is the current flowing through 10 ohm? Tell me here. If you want to know current flowing through 10 ohm, you must know, you must know, okay, the current flowing through 32 ohm also. So, already this is 14 volts. This is 15 volts. 49 minus of minus 15, not 15, that is minus 15, nothing but 64 volt. Therefore, the voltage across this particular element is what, Nana? 64 volts. And finally, the current here is 64 by 32, nothing but 2 ampere. You understand? So, 2 amperes is leaving. Got it? Okay. Now, 6 amperes is leaving in the 4 ohm resistor. Totally, how much leaving, Nana? 6 amperes leaving, 2 amperes leaving. How much it is? 8 amperes is leaving. Now, how much should enter here to satisfy Kirchhoff's current law? 6 plus 2, 8 amperes is supposed to enter. 8 into 10, this is plus minus 8 into 10, 80 volts. That is nothing but what? The voltage across 10 ohm. Now, you are jumping from lower potential to higher potential. Okay, that is 49. This is 49, right? This is 49, right? 49 plus 80. This voltage is going to be, okay, 49 plus 80, nothing but 129 volts. Okay, now tell me what is VG? Can you please tell me, Ashok, quickly? Tell me what is that voltage, Ashok? VG value, can you tell me? VG is going to be, how much? Tell me, is it 129? VG is not 129, remember, because this is not at zero now. This is not at zero now. Look at this. This is not at zero now. Because this was at zero, but this is at what? Minus 15. So, this is at what? 129. The potential difference between these two points is going to be 129 minus of minus 15. How much? 144 volts. I think you understand, Mr. Ashok. Okay? 144 volts, Nana. That is how you are supposed to solve. Got it, okay? 144, Nana. VG is supposed to be 144. I hope uh, you followed this method, okay? This is this method is called, this method is called what, Nana? Jumping technique. I told you already that this is jumping technique. Okay, you won't find this technique in uh, in textbooks, okay? With my experience, I'm suggesting you, I'm recommending you this method. It is easy to solve. You give me any network of single source type, I can easily solve it. While explaining, it is taking more time. But you give me the same problem in no time, I can accomplish this problem. Understand all of you, okay? So, jumping technique can be applied. Very, very important and powerful method to save the time in the competitive exams, okay? Well... Now tell me here, next one, node analysis, mesh analysis. When do we go for nodal, node and mesh analysis? Tell me here, node and mesh analysis are required for solving multi-source networks. Multi-source networks. Okay, single source networks can be solved by current division, voltage division, alternate method I suggested is jumping technique. Okay, no need to go for current division, voltage division. You can solve using jumping technique. Of course, you can solve using node and mesh analysis, but time waste process. More number of equations you may come across and finally, you're going to take a lot of time for them to solve the single source networks. But I suggest you for multi-source networks, always node and mesh analysis. So let's quickly just go through the inspection method, how we obtain the equations. This method, inspection method will help you in uh, obtaining the equation just by looking at the circuit. Okay. See, generally we obtain the equations using KVL, mesh analysis. In mesh analysis, we apply KVL to obtain the equations. You understand? Okay. In node analysis, we apply, in node analysis, we apply 
Kitchoff's current law to obtain the equations. You need finally the equations for the given network. Then only you can solve it. Yes or no? Okay. So here, first one, the mesh analysis. First, I would like to take case one. This is what the network I have taken here. All of you, please look into this. I1 is the loop current, 1, loop current 2, I2. And how do you write the equations? I think you might be aware. When I1 is assumed to be greater than I2, this is what the equation you are going to get. Okay? And when I2 is greater than I1, and this is what the equation you are going to get. Okay? So how to write these equations? You are probably aware of it. I don't want to explain in detail. Okay? I'm taking here fall in voltage is uh, negative, rise in voltage is positive. Like that, that convention I have taken and I have got these equations. Okay? I don't want to elaborate on this. But what I want to explain you here is the method called inspection method. How do you write the equations using the inspection method? The same circuit I'm taking here. All of you, please look at this carefully. Okay? You have two variables, right? There are two equations. How many equations you get here? Because there are two fundamental loops. How many loops are there? Actually, three loops are there. One, two, three. Okay, like this, there are so many loops. But how many fundamental loops are there? Only two fundamental loops are there. So the number of equations required in mesh analysis is equal to number of fundamental loops. Okay, in uh, graph theory technology, you can call it number of links. A number of links. Fundamental loops or links. You understand all of you? Okay, graph theory technology I'm talking about. So here, two loops are there. Two equations are required because there are two fundamental loops. So two equations you will get. Therefore, the matrix size is going to be what? 2 by 2 matrix. Look at this 2 by 2 matrix. This is what 2 by 2 matrix. And uh, it is 2 by 1 matrix. Okay, 2 by 2 matrix and 2 by 1 matrix, when you multiply, the result is 2 by 1 matrix. That is why it is again 2 by 1 matrix. You understand all of you? Okay. So how to write this 2 by 2 matrix and this 2 by 1 matrix? Anyway, this is variables, right? I1, I2 are simply variables. Okay, but the first matrix and the second matrix, how do you obtain? That we have to discuss so that the same experience is going to be useful to you even in the control systems while determining the transfer function for any given electric system or mechanical system. Okay, because for even mechanical system, whether it is a translatory motion or rotational motion, there actually you are trying to construct uh, the mechanical impedances. Yes or no, all of you, mechanical impedances you are going to find and finally you are going to determine the transfer function for the given mechanical system. Force voltage analogy, force current analogy, there are two different types of analogies are there or torque voltage or torque current analogy in the case of a rotational system. Yes or no, all of you. So this experience will help you not only here but also in the control systems. So be careful, okay. So carefully you can observe here. I am now dealing with what this 2 by 2 matrix first. This 2 by 2 matrix first. Yes, how do I write this? The, this 2 by 2 matrix. I have 1, 1 element, 1, 2 element, 2, 1 element, 2, 2 element. Always remember, whether it is node analysis or mesh analysis, okay, this matrix will always satisfy off diagonal symmetry. Off diagonal symmetry. Remember, don't forget that. It will always satisfy the off-diagonal symmetry. What do you mean by off-diagonal symmetry? Off-diagonal symmetry means i row, okay, jth column, jth column, okay, element is same as jth row, ith column element. You understand all of you? That means, suppose if yij is equal to what? yji. I hope you understand this. i throw jth column element is same as what? j throw i th column element. I hope you understand this, right? So, that is why you see r3 and r3, you got it. But 1, 1, 2, 2 elements are supposed to be determined. If you want to know 2, 1, then 1, 2, if you know, that is enough. 1, 2 element, if you know, then obviously you know the 2, 1 element. So, now let us try to understand how do you write those equations? How, how do you write the matrix form here? First, 1, 1 element. You just see how this I1 is passing through, which elements actually this I1 is passing through, particularly passive elements. It is passing through R1. It is passing through R2. Of course, it is passing through E1. Yes or no? Okay. When it is passing through E1, it is touching negative polarity first. Yes or no? It is touching what? Negative polarity first. 
whereas here I2 is touching what positive polarity first. These are the important observations while applying the inspection method. For any given a large network, okay, whether it is a large network or a small network doesn't matter, you can easily write this particular matrix form without any difficulty. The method is called what, Nana? Inspection method. Okay, well, so look at this now. Now, R1 plus R2, but you put a negative sign here. Sir, what is this negative sign? The negative sign is a predefined sign. Sir, I would like to put positive sign instead of negative predefined sign. Is there any problem? There is no problem. Then in that case, entire my convention will be reversed. So wherever I take plus, you have to take minus. Wherever I take minus, you have to take plus. You understand all of you, okay? The convention will become reversed completely. But now I am taking here the negative polarity for the diagonal elements. Look at this. This is a diagonal element, 1, 1 element. This is 2, 2 element. For all diagonal elements, the predefined sign is taken. In my case, I am taking always. I am more comfortable with that. That is negative sign. You understand all of you, okay? So negative of some of the resistances in the first loop. Tell me what is that? R1 and R3. That is why you got minus of R1 plus R3. Similarly, okay, you got, look at this, in the second loop, the I2 is passing through R2 and R3 because R1 and R3 belong to first loop, R2, R3 and second loop, okay, R3 belong to both first and second loop, R1 belongs to only first loop, R2 belongs to only second loop, I think this is very clear to all of you, right? Yes or no, all of you, okay? So therefore, the common element between the first and second loop, that means one and two loops, right? One and two loops, what is the common element? This is R3, therefore you got R3 here. But why you got positive sign here is, look at this, this is a common element, R3. How the I1 is flowing downward direction, yes or no? How I2 is flowing upward direction in R3, okay? I2 is flowing R uh, upward direction in R3. Both the currents are opposing each other. When both the currents are opposing each other, you take opposite sign to the diagonal element sign, the sign of the diagonal element. So what was the diagonal element sign? Negative sign. Now you take positive sign here because the I1 and I2 both are opposing each other according to the representation of the loop currents in the given circuit. Understand all of you? Okay, very good. So plus R3 I have taken. And I told you, here 2, 1 element and 1, 2 element both are same because of this off diagonal symmetry. Into, okay, now here 2, 2 element I have shown you already minus of R2 plus R3 because R2 and R3 belong to what? Second loop. R1 and R3 belong to what? First loop. R1 belongs to only first loop. R2 belongs to only second loop. R3 belongs to both first and second loop. This is how you have to analyze. Yes or no, all of you? Okay, well. Now coming to here, the 2, 1, uh, you know, matrix on the right side part. Look at this. The I1 is touching the E1. First polarity is what actually? It is touching the polarity what? It is touching the polarity first what? Negative sign. That is why you got minus E1. And I2 is touching what first here? Positive polarity. Therefore, that is why you got plus E2. This is how you have to remember. Okay? So, diagonal element negative sign. Okay? Off diagonal element, uh, the sign depends upon how the loop currents are flowing in the common element. Are they opposing? Then you take opposite sign of uh, the diagonal element, okay, or else you take the same sign. Understand all of you, okay? And the right side uh, matrix to one matrix, whatever you are taken, the voltage sources, how that loop current is touching the polarity. Is it touching the negative sign first, then take negative. If it is touching positive sign first, then you take positive. That's it. Simple. Okay? So this is how you are going to get. Once you got this matrix form, use the Cramer's rule. I1 is equal to delta 1 by delta. I2 is equal to delta 2 by delta. Simple. Okay, well, so now case two, there is another case. I am taking now the loop currents like this. Okay, one is clockwise, the other is anti-clockwise. So these are the two equations I get, but how I get the matrix form that is more important for me now. Inspection method. Look at this, R1, R2 belongs to what first loop, therefore minus R1 plus R3. R2, R3 belongs to second loop, therefore minus of R2 plus R3. Okay, R3 belongs to both first and second loop, therefore R3. But why I got negative sign? Because look at this, I1 is flowing like this, that means like this. I2 is flowing like this, okay, means counterclockwise, that means like this. That means both the currents, I1 and I2 are flowing 
in the same direction, in the downward direction in R3. So therefore, the sign of the off diagonal element must be same as that of, okay, the diagonal element. What is the diagonal element sign? You have taken already predefined negative. Therefore, here it should also be negative. And first row, second column element is same as second row, first column element that is minus R3. Yes or no, all of you? Okay. Well, so therefore, finally you got four elements here, right? Into I1 and I2. Okay. Those are the two variables which you are supposed to determine. And what about minus E1, minus E2? How you got it? I1 is touching negative sign first. I2 is also touching negative sign first according to the representation of the loop currents given in the circuit, minus E1 and minus E2. Finally, you can apply the Cranberts rule and get the values of what? I1 and I2. Clear all of you? Okay, very simple. Now, case 3 I'm taking here. I'm selecting the loop currents in a different fashion. First loop I have selected here like this. Second loop I have selected like this. You understand all of you? Okay, first loop and second loop. What are the elements belong to first loop? Can anybody answer here? Yes, Ashok, very good. Can anybody answer what are the elements belong to first and second loop? Anybody answer quickly? What are the elements belong to first loop? Only first loop I am not asking. I am asking first loop. What are the elements belong to second loop? Please mention clearly first loop, second loop elements. And what are the elements belong to both first and second loop? Can you please tell me? Quickly. R1 and R3 belong to first loop. Very good. What about second loop, Ashok? Yes, other people can also respond. Yes, even is also, even belongs to first loop, okay. Good. Elements, yes, R1 and R3, loop 1. Chandu, very good. Okay, R1 and R3, loop 1. But what about uh, loop 2, Nana, Chandu? Loop 2. Quickly, please. Don't take much time. Please, quickly. R1 and R2 belongs to second loop. Yes, exactly. Now, what are the common elements? What about R3? R3 belongs to first loop or only first loop or uh, only... Only second loop or both first and second loop? R3. Please tell me about R3. R1 R2 belong to second loop. Yes, correct. According to the representation given here, what about R3, Nana? R3. Chandu, can you please answer it? Ashok gave the answer that is both. Chandu, tell me. R3 belongs to first loop or second loop or only first loop? Tell me. Or both first and second loop? Tell me. Quickly. R3 only loop 1. Very good. See, look at this. I1 is passing through R1, R3, E1. Yes or no? I2 is passing through R1, R2, E2, E1. It's very clear. But R3... It is experiencing only one loop current that is I1. I2 is not passing through it. Is it okay, Ashok? Okay. Now, R3 belongs to only first loop. R2 belongs to only second loop. R1 belongs to both first and second loop. Of course, E1 belongs to both first and second loop. E2 belongs to only second loop. Is it clear? Is it clear? Okay, well, so that is going to be very useful in constructing this matrix form. I don't want to explain again how you got this, okay, because these equations are very easy to analyze. I think you are experts in writing these equations. But now my focus is on what, Nana? My focus is on the inspection method. Okay, my focus is on what? Inspection method. Look at this. First, 1-1 uh, one, one element. 1-1 one, one element means elements belong to first loop. Not element belongs to only first loop, not like that. Elements belong to first loop. Tell me. Passive elements. R1 and R3. That's why minus R1 plus R3. Negative sign is what? Predefined sign. Clear? 2-2 two, two element. Elements belong to second loop. What is that? R1 and R2. That's why negative sign. Already predefined sign. R1 plus R2. Common element between the first and second loop. Passive element. 
R1 belongs to both first loop and second loop because I1 is passing and I2 is also passing. Therefore, R1 belongs to both first loop as well as second loop. That is why the common element, one to element, one to means first and second loop, okay, between R1. But how the loop currents are flowing, I1 is passing like this, I2 is also passing like this, both the currents are flowing in the same direction in R1, therefore the sign of off diagonal element should be same as that of, same as that of, okay, the diagonal element. What are the diagonal element sign is there, the same sign will be applied to off diagonal element. So 1 to element is same as 2 1 element now, into I1 I2, now the voltage sources belong to the first loop, only E1, how this I1 is touching the polarity, minus first, therefore minus E1, yes or no, okay. Now, what about uh, the second loop, second loop consists of two voltage sources, one is E2, the other is E1, now I2 is touching positive polarity first in case of E2, therefore plus E2, and I2 is touching negative polarity first here, therefore minus E1, so E2 minus E1, that's it. This is a very, very simple way of writing the equations. No normal equations. Again, see, if you write these equations and take common and find the matrix form, you will get it matrix form, but that is not inspection. You are supposed to write these matrix form directly by looking at this particular circuit. That is called inspection method, Nana. You understand? Okay? Well, now, another one is what? Super mesh analysis. Okay? Most of the times, you know, the current source, when it is there, if you want to apply the mesh analysis, you are supposed to apply what on a super mesh analysis, usually. But I will also suggest to you another alternative method. I generally recommend, okay, don't apply super mesh analysis in the competitive exams. Unless it is going to give you more number of equations, it's a time-consuming process. Look at this, all of you here. Look at this. This problem can be solved in two different ways. One is super mesh. Okay, the other is, I will tell you how you, you can solve it, okay. So, according to super mesh analysis, according to super mesh analysis, first you express these loop currents in terms of this current source value. Look at this, this is I1, this is I2, okay. The current flowing in this branch is either I1 minus I2 or I2 minus I1. If I assume I2 is greater than I1, then I2 minus I1 is upward direction. If I assume... I1 is greater, then I1 minus I2 is in downward direction. So, whichever you want, you can take. If I take I2 minus I1 upward, then I is also, okay, upward. This is I2 minus I1 is also upward. I can equate these two. So, therefore, finally, I got I2 minus I1 is equal to, okay, I. I think you understand this. I2 minus I1 is equal to I. Yes, I1 minus I2 also you can take, Nana. But I1 minus I2 is flowing in the downward direction. In that case, you are supposed to take I1 minus I2 is equal to minus I. Because I is upward, I1 minus I2 downward, then to match those two terms, you must put minus sign before capital I. Yes or no? Okay? Well, so I hope you understand that. Now, you got one equation, but there are two variables, right? I1 and I2, two variables. You got one equation when the loop currents are expressed in terms of the current source value. Yes or no? Okay. Now what you do is, you suppress this current source because already you have taken this current source into account in this equation, right? You remove that current source or you replace that current source by its internal resistance. What is the internal resistance of an ideal current source, Nana? Infinite. Nothing but what? Open circuit. You suppress that current source and once you suppress, it forms, you are opening the current source now loop 1, loop 2 will be merged and forming a common loop or common mesh. This common mesh is called a super mesh. This common mesh is called what? Super mesh. So what is the super mesh definition here? It is a merge of two individual meshes. It is a merge of two individual meshes between which an ideal current source is connected. Because I is nothing but what an ideal current source. It is a merge of I1 and I2 loops, two loops, loop 1 and loop 2, okay, between which there is an ideal current source because ideal current source is a common element between mesh 1 and mesh 2, loop 1 and loop 2. Yes or no, all of you, okay? So, whenever there is an ideal current source between two loops, there it results in a super mesh. Understand all of you? Okay, well, now what you do is, 
you apply the KVL in the super mesh. You apply the KVL in the super mesh. Understand all of you, okay? Then, when you apply the super KVL in the super mesh, what will happen by maintaining the previous branch voltage? Because the current flowing in this particular branch was I1. The current flowing in this branch was I2 earlier. Now you maintain the same branch currents and the voltage is I1, R1. Here I2, R2. Yes or no? Now you apply the KVL. So look at this. Plus E1. Okay. Minus R1 into I1. Minus R2 into I2. Minus E2 is equal to 0. This is the second equation. Already you got first equation here. And you got second equation here. You solve them. You get I1 and I2 values. This is what the super mesh analysis. You understand all of you? This is what a super mesh analysis. Now method 2 is that. I recommend not to apply super mesh in the competitive exams. Super mesh is not an advantage. Actually, it's a disadvantage. You look at this. If I properly choose the loop currents, the same problem can be solved with one equation instead of two equations. Actually, the number of equations required, number of equations required in mesh analysis. This is one more question, Anna. Be careful. The question may come in any direction. We do not know. Concepts must be very clear in the competitive exams. Number of equations in mesh analysis must be equal to number of fundamental loops. This is what actually we are supposed to, okay, remember all the time. But sometimes this condition fails. Look at this particular example. Okay, look at this. Suppose if I select the loop currents like this. Look at this all of you. Because I know how to select the loop currents according to my choice. I have got the freedom, right? I got the freedom to select the loop currents. Agree all of you? Okay. Now, look at this. When I1 is, I1 dash is selected here, I1 dash is the current flowing through what? This branch. And I belongs to only first loop. When I belongs to only first loop, its loop current and branch current both will be same. Yes or no, all of you? Okay. Then, what is that current? I1 dash is flowing in downward. I is flowing upward. Therefore, I1 dash is equal to minus I. It is a known value. It is a known value. So I don't have to solve for I1 dash because I know, suppose if I is equal to 10 amperes, then I can immediately conclude without solving the equations, I1 dash is equal to minus 10 amperes. You agree all of you? I1 dash is equal to minus 10 amperes. Chandu and Ashok, I hope you are following this particular concept. Okay? I think the remaining people can also respond, okay? In case if you don't understand, please put in the comment box, I can repeat it. I1 dash is equal to minus 10 amperes. Got it, okay? So I know the value of I1 dash. Now only thing I have to do what? I2 dash value. So how do I find the I2 dash? Now apply KVL by selecting a loop in which there is no current source. Look at this. This loop I am selecting now because it does not have any current source. You understand all of you, okay? So you know that this is what I2 dash now, okay? This is what I2 dash. Already have taken I1 dash, where the I1 dash value is known already. So what is the current flowing here? I1 dash plus I2 dash, the branch current. Here it is I2 dash. Now you can apply the Kirchhoff's voltage law in this particular loop. That equation is going to be, okay, the equation 1. One equation is enough. Okay? Ashok. Ashok, are you following? Chandu, you are okay with this, right? Okay. But Ashok, tell me. You need you need one more time explanation, Ashok. Any problem or anywhere you got an issue here, please tell me. Please tell me, Ashok. Okay. So now I think you understand. Now I think you understand Chandu and Ashok, okay? Please look at this. Uh, the minimum number of equations. Generally, the minimum number of equations. Okay, Ashok, I'll explain you again. Look at this, Ashok. Look at this. Look at this carefully. The alternative method I'm discussing, instead of super mesh analysis, I'm discussing the alternative method. Yes, look at this. I have selected the loop currents like this. What I do is, I select the first loop current, okay, such that that loop contains the current source. The current source will experience only one loop current. 
that means the current source must not be a common element between the first and second loop earlier we have selected what what here look at this the loop currents are selected here okay in such a way that the current source has become what the common element between the loop 1 and loop 2 but now what i am trying to do is i am selecting the loop currents in such a way that the current source is not going to be the common element between the loop 1 and loop 2 because when the current source is a common element between the loop 1 and loop 2 what is happening here it is resulting in the super mesh and finally you got two equations in the previous uh, case yes or no but now what i am trying to do is i am trying to reduce the number of equations look at this how loop 1 i am selecting like this loop 2 i am selecting like this the second loop current i have selected in such a way that it is not going to pass through the current source so that the current source is not a common element up to this is it okay mr ashok please respond quickly so now tell me here i belongs to only first loop or uh, both first loop and second loop i belongs to only first loop or both first loop and second loop tell me here according to this representation i belongs to only first loop when i belongs to only first loop okay only first loop means its loop current and branch current both are same so what is the branch current here the i1 dash is flowing in this direction but i is upward i1 is downward then can I say I1 dash is equal to minus I? But all these values are known values. I, E1, E2, R1, R2 are given values. Suppose if I is equal to 10 amperes, then I1 dash is equal to what? Minus 10 amperes. That means without solving the equations, I am able to find I1 dash. Yes or no? But I2 dash is supposed to be determined. One equation is compulsory in this particular case. How many loops are there? Two loops are there. Yes or no? But I1 dash is not, uh, you know, it is not required to solve. You are, without uh, solving the equations itself, you are getting that value. Only one more equation is required. So two loops, but one equation is enough. Therefore, this condition fails. Number of, minimum number of equations required in mesh analysis is not L. Okay, this condition fails because of the presence of the current source. Now, this particular one will be valid. That is the minimum number of equations required in mesh analysis is equal to L minus number of fundamental loops 2 minus number of current sources 1. Therefore, 2 minus 1 is equal to 1 equation is enough. That equation is this one. Is it clear, Ashok, now? Okay. That equation I have written because here I1 dash plus I2 dash is the current. Here I2 dash. Okay. Please apply KVL in this particular loop then you will get this particular equation. Clear, Ashok? Okay? Well. Now, the point is, the point is now, the question was asked, you know, here, uh, find I1 and I2. But for our convenience, we have selected the loop currents like this temporarily. This is I1 dash, this is I2 dash. Sometimes this kind of question may be asked in the exam also. Both the circuits are same. Look at this. E1, E2, I, I, R1, R2, all are same. Only the selection of loop currents is different. Okay? Suppose, if I know I1 dash and I2 dash, okay, in the given circuit, can't I find I1 and I2 in the first circuit? Because both the circuits are same. Yes or no? Suppose, if I1 and I2 are given in the first circuit, Okay, can't I find what is I1 dash and I2 dash in the second circuit? Yes or no? Can you please respond quickly? Can I find if I know I1, I2, can I find I1 dash and I2 dash? And vice versa, is it possible? Can I find or not? Tell me quickly. Chandu and Ashok, please respond. Or anybody can respond, please. If you don't follow, please uh, put in the comment box. I can definitely clarify your doubts. Quickly. Look at this. Suppose if I1 dash, you already solved I1 dash and I2 dash, right? Yes, possible, Chandu. Okay, very good. I1 dash and I2 dash already you solved. But how do you find I1 and I2? For that, what logic you are supposed to implement here is loop currents might be different. Loop currents might be different, but branch currents remain same or not. When you change the loop currents, when they change the selection of loop currents, obviously loop currents values will change. 
but the branch currents remain same or not current flowing through r1 remains current flowing through r1 that's it here in the current flowing through r1 here current flowing through r1 both must be same what is the current flowing through r1 in this case this is i1 what is the current flowing through r1 in this case i1 dash plus i2 dash that is why i1 can be nothing but what i1 dash plus i2 dash understand all of you the current flowing through r2 in this case is what i2 the current flowing through r2 in this case is what i2 dash therefore i2 is nothing but what i2 dash that's it you understand all of you okay so if you know i1 and i2 you know how to find i1 dash and i2 dash if you know i1 dash and i2 dash you also know what is i1 and i2 values because the circuit is same only the loop currents you know change understand all of you okay so this is very very interesting example okay so if i know i1 dash is equal to 10 amperes and i2 dash is equal to 3 amperes then i1 will be 10 plus 3 that is 13 amperes and i2 will be simply i2 dash that is nothing but 3 amperes okay the branch currents remain same okay the branch currents is remain same even though the loop currents are different okay very good clear sir okay what is your name it your your name is uh, differently written over there dodge king okay so what is that name so please mention your name so that i can call you with your name okay well well now coming to the node analysis let's quickly move on to the node analysis now tell me the number of equations are reduced or not here in this case tell me okay i am not going to recommend the super mesh analysis and number of equations required in the mesh analysis is equal to what number of fundamental loops minus number of current sources that is what the minimum number of equations required in the mesh analysis now coming to the node analysis there are some questions in the exam in the gate examination one circuit was given okay and he was asking what are the minimum number of equations required to analyze the following network analyze means to solve the following network that question i will discuss don't worry okay the gate question was there i will explain you that now coming to the node analysis here first case i am taking here okay so i know that you you can easily identify the minimum number of nodes here three nodes are there when three nodes are there how many equations are required three minus one equations are required okay vikram hi vikram okay very good very good so it's clear for you right okay so hope you are enjoying the class please uh, give your comments in case if you have any doubts okay vikram so there are three nodes three minus one equations n number of nodes generally n minus one equations l number of loops l number of equations in mesh analysis n number of nodes n minus one equations in node analysis but l number of loops l number of equations that condition is also failed especially when there is a current source that is why i told you the minimum number of equations required is l minus number of current sources if there are no current sources in the circuit the minimum number of equations required in mesh analysis l only because there are no current sources but if there are current sources you are supposed to use l minus number of current sources got it okay but when it comes to num, you know node analysis n number of nodes n minus 1 equation but sometimes this condition will also fail i'll tell you but this is a standard you know formula people will remember always but you must be very careful okay i'll tell you one example which was asked in the gate after discussion of this particular uh, cases okay case 1 case 2 case 3 then you will understand six different case i'm discussing and one among them is a gate question i will discuss that don't worry okay so three nodes usually the bottom node is selected as a reference node that is why n number of equations uh, n number of nodes n minus 1 equations you are getting because one node is selected as a reference node reference node datum node or zero potential node people take it as can take it as what zero potential node okay well now tell me here if i take v1 and v2 then i should write the equations right so generally node analysis deals with what known as kirchhoff's current law i need to find current through each and every branch what is the current flowing through this branch v1 minus e1 by r1 is the current v1 minus 0 minus e4 by r4 is the current flowing through this branch v1 minus v2 minus e3 by r3 is the current flowing through this branch v2 by r5 i should not write because r5 is in series with i5 okay this r5 can be eliminated any element in series with an ideal current source can be neglected 
if R5 is in series with this I5, because that resistive element is in series with the current source, ideal current source particularly, that R5 can be eliminated. Okay, don't apply V2 by R5 because V2 is not the voltage across R5. V2 is the voltage across the series combination of R5 and I5. So the current is already known. No need to find it again. I5 is the current flowing through the branch. And again here, this is minus plus E2. Therefore, this voltage is going to be what minus E2. Therefore, the current flowing through this particular branch is V2 minus of uh, V2 minus of minus E2. That is nothing but V2 plus E2 by R2 is the current flowing through this branch. So it's very clear. Let me write current flowing through each and every branch here. Once again. I'm clearly writing here. All of you follow it. You should not have doubt here, okay? Three nodes. One node is taken as zero. The other node is V1. The other node is V2. V1, V2 are the node voltage, principal node voltage. Okay? Now, current flowing through each branch, let us write here. What is the current flowing through branch here? V1, because this is E1 actually. So the potential difference is V1 minus E1. Let us say V1 is greater. So the current flowing here is V1 minus E1 by R1. Okay? The potential difference across this R4 is, okay, this is V1, this is E4, because this is 0, this is E4. Therefore, the potential difference across R4 is, okay, V1 minus E4. Then the current flowing here is, okay, the current flowing here is V1 minus E4 by R4. You understand, okay? Then, current flowing through this branch. For that, you require voltage across this. This voltage is V1. This voltage is V2 plus E2. Therefore, the potential difference is V1 minus, okay, V2 plus E3. V2 plus E3, no, not E2, V2 plus E3. Therefore, the current is going to be V1 minus V2 minus E3 by R3. You understand? Okay. Now, this can be neglected. The current is already I5. The voltage at this particular node is minus E2. Therefore, the current is going to be V2 minus of minus E2 by R2. Nothing but V2 plus E2 by okay, R2. This is how you can write. You give me any circuit, I can easily identify the current through any path in terms of the node voltage. Got it all of you? Okay. Well, so that's how I've written the equation 1 and equation 2. Equation 1 and equation 2. Okay. All leaving currents positive, entering currents negative you can take. Leaving currents positive, entering currents negative. Okay. Hope you are following all of you. At node 1, you can write the equations by taking V1 greater than V2. At node 2, you can write the equations by taking V2 greater than V1. When you write the equation at node 1, you generally assume that V1 is greater than V2. So that the current always flows from higher potential to lower potential. At node 1, all currents will be leaving. That is why you get plus, 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 plus. This is minus I4 because this is an entering current. Look at this. As far as node 1 is concerned, it is entering current. I5, it is leaving current. That is why you got plus I5. Okay? Understand? Well. Now, I would like to write the inspection method. So why does we ignore the resistance parallel with the current source? Vikram, actually we are not going to neglect the element connected parallel to the old uh, current source. We are neglecting the element which is in series with the current source, Vikram. Please correct that statement. Please correct, correct that uh, statement. For that, you have to understand one important point, uh, Vikram. Look at this. This is an independent current source, Vikram. 10 amperes. Okay? Following Vikram. This is 10 amperes. Say this is... 5 ohm. You quickly respond to my question, okay? You please quickly respond to my question. Then you understand it. Look at this. This is an independent current source. Independent current source means, okay, independent current source means it supplies constant current. 
Okay, it supplies constant current. Irrespective of what is going to happen in the rest of the circuit, it doesn't matter for it. Okay, somewhere uh, some resistance value is changed, still it will supply the power at a constant current. It supplies the power at a constant current, remember. Okay, remember, it supplies the power at a constant current. That is an independent current source. What do you mean by independent voltage source? It supplies the power at a constant voltage. I think you understand the definition of the independent voltage source and independent current source. Independent current source means it supplies the power at a constant current. So, you tell me now here, suppose if this resistance value is 5 ohm, what is the current flowing all the time here through this particular branch? It is still 10 amperes, right? Because these two are connected in series, constant current source, the, the, the independent current source will always supply the power at a constant current. That means it is always 10 amperes flowing in that particular branch. Yes or no? Suppose I replace this 5 ohm by 10 ohm, do you get any change in this current, Nana? Current flowing through the path? No. If you replace this 10 ohm by 100 ohm, what is the current flowing through this path? It is still 10 amperes. That means what? The path current is not depending upon the value of the resistance which is connected in series with the current source. I hope you understand the point. Vikram, please respond quickly. You understand that point? Okay? The current source value, because it is constant, you know, delivering power at a constant uh, current, the current flowing, yes, yes, Vikram, very good. The current flowing through that, that particular path is all the time 10 amperes irrespective of the value of the resistance connected in series with the current source. So I don't mind in neglecting that then. Yes or no, all of you? Okay? Well. So these are the two equations I obtained. Now, most important one is what inspection method. I'm going to discuss inspection method. Okay? What is that inspection method? Let us see now. All of you carefully observe here. This is 0, this is V1, this is V2. Inspection is nothing but the instructions, the rules which I am giving, you must feed in your mind first. Okay, I don't know any KCL, I don't know any KVL, but I can write the matrix form directly. This method is useful in the control systems also, especially when you deal with the mechanical system and electrical systems. Within no time, you can find the transfer function of any given mechanical system or electrical system using the inspection method. Just one step after this, apply the Kramer's rule and get the transfer function. Understand? Okay? Okay. Look at this now. I'm applying KCL at this node. Right? How many variables are there? There are three nodes, but two equations we require. That means two variables, V1 and V2. So the matrix size is also what? 2 by 2 matrix. And variables are 2, therefore 2 by 1. And the right side quantity will also be 2 by 1 matrix. Yes or no? So 2 by 2 matrix. Okay, this is 1, 1 element. This is 1, 2 element. This is 2, 1 element. This is 2, 2 element. Yes or no? Okay, well, clear. 1, 1 element whenever you write, just see how many resistive elements are connected at node 1. Okay? And take the predefined sign positive. Take the predefined sign positive. Okay? And take sum of conductances connected to node 1. Conductance means what? No, no, reciprocal of resistance. Sum of conductances. In mesh analysis, we applied sum of resistances in the loop, right? Here, sum of conductances at node 1. Tell me, R1 is the resistance, conductance is 1 by R1. R3 is the resistance, conductance is 1 by R3. R4 is the resistance, conductance is 1 by R4. Sum of conductances. You understand? Okay. Node 2 at node 2. How many resistive elements are connected here? R2, R3 and R5. But you should neglect this R5 because it is in series with what? current source. Neglecting that resistive element, how many remaining are there? Only two. That is R2 and R3. Sum of conductances at node 2 will be 2 by 2 element. 
that is positive sign again predefined sign here positive sign is taken as predefined sign you understand okay in the case of mesh analysis negative sign was taken as a predefined sign in the case of node analysis positive sign is taken as a predefined sign sir why you are taking positive sign as a predefined sign it is for my convenience nothing else sir i want to take negative take but entire convention must be reversed completely wherever i take positive you must take negative wherever i take negative you must take positive you understand all of you there is nothing wrong in that because when equation is multiplied minus by minus 1 does it make any difference no that is why follow any convention but if you follow my convention it will be easy for you look at this two to element sum of conductances at node 2 1 by r2 plus 1 by r3 what is the common element between the first and second node passive element only r3 only r3 take the conductance of it 1 by r3 minus sign i am taking because okay generally potential difference difference means means what opposition right difference means what v1 minus v2 or v2 minus v1 negative sign will come into picture so when diagonal element sign is positive off diagonal element sign is negative blindly that's it there is no need to investigate anything on that whereas in the case of mesh analysis we have to investigate whether the loop currents are flowing in the same direction or opposite direction in the common element that we have to investigate but in the node analysis there is no need to investigate anything if diagonal element is positive off diagonal element is negative if diagonal element is negative then off diagonal element is positive that's it simple you understand all of you okay well so it is 1 by 2 1 by r3 but negative sign and first row second column element is same as second row first column that is why it is also minus 1 by r3 so you got all 1 1 2 1 2 2 1 2 2 elements this matrix is over then v1 v2 is equal to now you have to be very careful here at node 1 how many branches are connected nana four branches and in each branch there might be one current source or there might be one voltage source or there might be no source at all yes or no look at this in this particular branch there is a voltage source if i assume v1 is greater if i assume v1 is greater the current leaves from the higher potential and uh, it is touching the positive polarity first therefore plus e1 by its internal resistance ideal voltage source in series with the internal resistance can be treated as a practical voltage source so any resistance in series with an ideal voltage source can be treated as its internal resistance there is nothing wrong you understand okay therefore plus e1 by r1 because i am touching positive polarity first here here i4 is entering usually i4 is entering means okay entering current is negative generally but you are writing that component to the right side right it's a right side component okay therefore you take positive sign entering current become positive here understand okay then it is current is leaving and touching positive polarity first plus e3 by r3 current is leaving and touching positive polarity first plus e3 by, sorry plus e3 by r3 here plus e4 by r4 you understand okay this is plus e3 by r3 because positive sign is touch, touching here and here it is touching positive sign first e4 therefore plus e4 by its series resistor okay its series resistor sir what happens when there is no series resistor i'll come to that case later on don't worry okay definitely generally there is a series resistor if there is no series resistor the problem will become much more simpler i'll tell you that later okay well now coming to the v2 nana it is touching negative sign first minus e2 by r2 minus e2 by r2 now here v2 greater it is touching negative sign first minus e3 by r3 i5 is leaving usually leaving current is positive on the left side but when you send it right side it is negative minus i5 simple such a big network i can directly write the matrix form otherwise you have to write the equation separately then again you have to form a matrix form by taking common it's a time taking process okay you can easily write the matrix form okay without any difficulty using this inspection method clear all of you vikram ashok chandu i think you are able to follow right please respond case 2 case 2 look at this case 2 okay 
I am taking now this node as a reference node. In fact, any node can be selected as a reference node. Sometimes, you know, sometimes when you select the reference node at a different locations, that will be a greatest advantage in solving the networks in an easy manner. That is why I am taking here the same network. I am taking the same network. But only the selection of reference node has been changed. This node is selected as a reference node. Now this becomes V1. This becomes V2. I am not writing the normal equations. I am writing the inspection method directly. Look at this. At first node, R1, R3, R4 are connected. Therefore, positive sign 1 by R1, 1 by R3, 1 by R4. At second node, Okay, again, here this branch is consisting of R1, right? R1, R4, and then R2. I am neglecting this R5. Therefore, you got 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R4. Of course, positive sign I am taking here because, because it is a predefined sign. But you see, what are the common elements between the first and second node? R1 as well as R4, both are there. Because between V1 and V2, R4 is there, R1 is there. Therefore, in the first and second node, that means one two element will consist of both the elements and take one by R1 plus one by R4 because you need to deal with the conductances, right? Reciprocals. Negative sign is compulsory here. One by R1, okay, one by R4. Both, some of these two conductances you are supposed to take. And of course, first row, second column is same as second row, first column. Easily you can write. So, you got simply matrix from easy manner. Into V1, V2 is equal to Okay, is equal to is missing here. I am putting here. Now, V1, at V1, if you see it is touching positive polarity first plus E1 by R1. I1, I4 is entering, therefore, plus I4. Okay, it is touching positive polarity first plus E3 by R3. Okay, now, here, it is touching positive polarity first plus E4 by R4. It is missing, Nana. Please rectify it. Plus E4 by R4. Understand? Okay. Now, at second node. At second node. It is touching negative sign first. Therefore, minus E1 by R1. This current is leaving as far as V2 is concerned. Minus I4. It is touching negative sign first here. That's why minus E4 by R4. I5 is entering. Therefore, plus I5. It is touching positive polarity first here. Plus E2 by R2. Simple. That's it. So, 2 by 2 matrix and 2 by 1 matrix can be written easily. You understand all of you? Okay. Fine. Now, suppose in the first case, uh, I want the voltages in the first case by knowing the second case voltage. Means, I solve the equations. I solved the equations and I found V1, V2 here in the second case. Okay, that means what? By taking this node as a reference node, okay, I got, let us say, V1 is equal to 10 volts. Assumption, okay, V2 is equal to 7 volts. What will be V1, V2 values or V1 dash and V2 dash values if I take or if, you, if I take in this particular node as a reference node? You understand? What happens then? What is the difference between these two cases? Tell me. Here, this is a reference node. Whereas here, this is a reference node. To get this particular case, I must convert this particular node into reference node. Yes or no? I must convert this particular node into reference node. If I want to convert this particular node into reference node, I must reduce the voltage by 7. If one particular node voltage is reduced by 7, then every node voltage will be reduced by the 7 or not. That is a concept in the networks. Node analysis. You have n number of nodes. If one particular node voltage is increased by 10 volts, then every node voltage will be increased by the 10 volts. If one particular node voltage is reduced by 7 volts, then every node voltage is reduced by the 7 volts. You understand all of you? Okay. Well, so therefore, if I want to do it, then 7 minus 7 I have to do then every node voltage is also reduced by the 7. Earlier it was 10. Therefore, 10 minus 7 is equal to what? 3 volts, this particular node voltage. Earlier it was 0. Now V2 dash will become 0 minus 7 is nothing but what? Minus 7 volts. Finally, you look at this. The difference between these two, 10 minus 7, is nothing but what? Nana? 3 volts. Here also, 3 minus 0, 
3 minus 0, it is 3 volts. 0 minus 7 is nothing but minus 7 volts. Minus 7 minus 0 is nothing but minus 7 volts. 10 minus 0 is nothing but what? 10 volts. Okay. Now here, 3 minus of minus 7, 3 minus of minus 7, nothing but what? Plus 10 volts. Look at this. The branch voltage remains same. It does not change. The node voltage may change because you are changing the reference node position. Okay. Reference node position when you change, okay, the node voltage may change accordingly. But the branch voltage remains same. Yes or no, all of you? So sometimes in the circuit, he will give you like this, okay? By taking this node as a reference node, I got these two voltages. Yes. By taking this node as a reference node, then what could be the values of V1 dash and V2 dash? There is a possibility. You understand all of you? Okay? Well, so this is how you can discuss some cases, okay? Already it is 10, 15, okay? So I would like to put a full stop and continue the lecture. Super node analysis. And uh, I am not going to recommend super node analysis in the exam. I am going to introduce one new method called reference node shifting method. You have to cleverly choose the reference node, okay? So that the number of equations will be decreased and you can directly escape from the super node and you can get the solution in less amount of time. That part I will discuss in the next session that is tomorrow at 9 o'clock, okay? So don't miss that class. I am going to discuss so many questions, around 20 problems we are going to solve. 20 problems we are going to solve. Tomorrow when you join, okay, you please come up with your calculators. 20 different problems I am going to solve. I am giving my own questions and I am also going to give you the questions which were asked in the previous gate, okay, previous gate examination. I am going to take some previous papers questions and I am going to give you my own questions. Don't miss that class tomorrow and please, okay, pass on the message to your friends, okay, circulate among your friends, let them also get maximum benefit out of this particular lecture. I am sure that they will also enjoy the class, okay. Thank you so much for your patient listening and tomorrow we will continue from here, okay, wherever I stop and we will definitely have a wonderful session tomorrow also. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Yeah, Chandu, network topology, I will explain you. Don't worry. Okay. I will take some session. Okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. I will explain you. I will take some session. Network topology also, I will take. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Vikram. Thank you.